Hello, Wendy, and hello, lovely ladies from Women on the Front Lines. My name is Arlene Westerhoff, and I lead Women on the Front Lines in the Netherlands, and it is my joy to join you from Amsterdam. And Wendy, I just want to say it is an honor for me to participate in this amazing initiative that you've got going. Now, Wendy has asked me today to speak about what the Bible has to say about change. And that's one of my favorite topics because one of my primary ministries in the body of Christ is as a prophet. And as prophets, we talk a lot about change. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 9 says the following behold the former things have come to pass says the lord and new things i declare before they spring forth i tell you of them and so god promises to talk to us in times of change and if any time was a time of change this time in which the coronavirus is present is definitely ranking high on the list Another scripture about change is found in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. And there it says, Behold, I will do a new thing, says the Lord. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God is reminding us that even in times of strong change, he is still able to do the impossible. Now, in times of change, we often have a weakness, and that is that we look to what God has already done to define the new thing that God is doing. In 2019, I spent a lot of time proclaiming to the body of Christ that when God says, behold, I'm doing something new, he really does mean new. And that means that the things that we did, not even last year or last month, but yesterday, are not going to work as well as the things that God wants to show us for the new season that he's propelled us into. And that means that we have to listen to the Lord and we have to spend time with him to know what we're to do. The prophet Samuel was an example of someone who, even though he was an extremely gifted prophet, he made a mistake of looking to what had been in order to try and predict God's new. In 1 Samuel, Samuel chapter 16, God said to him that he had rejected Saul as king and that it was time for Samuel on God's behalf to go and anoint a new king. And so Samuel went to Jesse's home and as Jesse's son stood in front of him, Samuel took a look at Jesse's oldest son, Eliab, and he thought, surely this must be the anointed of God. Why did he think that? Because Eliab was tall and he was handsome, just like King Saul. Samuel made the mistake of not looking for God's new thing, but looking for the next thing that was a continuation of the old. And God said to Samuel, no, I have not chosen him. I have anointed, and I want you to anoint a new king. And that was King David. One of the things that we can be encouraged about in this time of change is the fact that we as women seem to have been pre-programmed by God to respond in faith. From Mary to Esther to Deborah, there are myriads of examples in the scriptures of women who have responded in faith uh, in order to do what God had called them to do, especially in times of change. And one of the women that I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about today is Abigail. I know we don't talk about her a lot, but as I was preparing, God really impressed upon my heart that Abigail is the type of woman that he wants to raise up in this time. In 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse three, the prophet Samuel had died. David had not yet become king. He was still running from Saul. And one of the times when he was running from Saul, his shepherds were out grazing their sheep and they came into contact with shepherds from a man named Nabal. Nabal was a rich farmer and he had many sheep. And while David's shepherds and Nabal's shepherds were together, David's men made sure that nothing happened to Nabal's shepherds or to Nabal's sheep. 
And then came a holiday. And David did not have food for his men to celebrate that holiday with. And so he sent these shepherds to Nabal to ask Nabal if he could have some food because of what they had done for Nabal's shepherds. Nabal, being a very foolish man, looked at David's servants and said, who's David? I don't care who he is. I don't even recognize him. He is nothing. Go and leave me. And David's men went back to David and told him what Nabal had said. And of course, David was furious. However, when Abigail, Nabal's wife, heard this, she reacted differently. In 1 Samuel 25, verse 3, it said that Abigail was a woman of good understanding and she was beautiful in appearance. She was beautiful and she was wise. And that is the kind of woman that God is raising up now to meet the challenges of this turbulent time that we're living in. Wise women who have an inner beauty that comes directly from him. What did Abigail do? She put food, she saddled up her donkeys, she put food on them and she went immediately to meet David. And David was coming up actually to kill Nabal and all of his household because of Nabal's brutality. And when Abigail met him, she bowed low at his feet and she said, please forgive my servant Nabal, he's a fool, just like his name, but please accept this gift. And what did David do? He praised her for her act. He said, you've just kept me from doing something that would have grieved the heart of God. As we finish this meditation, I just want to encourage you today that it doesn't matter how turbulent the times you are in, there is wisdom for you for today from God to meet the challenges. And so I bless you with that, with wisdom from the Lord to know what to do and what to say in the turbulent times in which you find yourself. In Jesus' name, amen.